afternoon, my name is George Eastman at Titan Conveyors, and today I'm going to demonstrate the proper tracking methods for a slider bed belt conveyor. First thing you want to do with the conveyor, once you get it put together and you get the belt on it, is make sure that the conveyor is level both in the cross direction and the machine direction. Just grab a level, and make sure that it's straight. Canted or twisted can have a huge impact on belt tracking, so this is a very important step. We have it level. Next thing you'll want to do is make sure that the in-feet shaft and the, and the drive pulley are square to themselves and square to the machine. So before the video, I took the liberty of making sure that the drive pulley was square just by measuring from the edge of the frame to the center of the shaft. And then back here, I'm going to measure from the edge of the frame right to the bearing collar. And I've got 15 and 3 quarter inches on this side, and 15 and 3 quarters inches on this side. So now I know my machine is level this way in the machine direction. And I know that both of my pulleys are square to the machine and square to each other. The next thing I'm going to do then is just make sure that the belt is tight enough to begin. Right now I can move the belt back and forth on the pulley. And we're going to want to tighten that up until we can no longer move that. So we'll tighten up the take-ups here in small increments, say a quarter inch at a time, until I can't move that belt back and forth on the in -feed. This one first. I'm going to go a quarter inch, so I'm going to go to fifth. I'm going to go to sixteen. Just a little bit more, and I'm at sixteen on this side, and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side and bring that to sixteen. sides. Check my belt tension. And now it's on that pulley nice and firm. The other thing that I'll typically do is I'll slide my hand under here and just make sure that I can get my hand width under there. Uh, and it's a little bit snug, not too tight. I wouldn't want it so tight that I can't get my hand in there. So that looks pretty good to start out. Now we'll go ahead and start up the machine, and after we start up the machine, the first thing we'll do is just sit and watch and see, see what the belt does. And you can see the belt is walking off to the right here a little bit. We'll just wait a little bit. belt we have to move over to the left a little bit. You can see there's a little bit of camber in the belt, uh, so you do have to watch several revolutions to make sure that you're not making a move just on a small section of the belt, but that the whole belt itself is actually over to one side or the other. So I'm going to make a small move on this. I'm going to take the in-feed pulley. And I'm going to take that from 16 to about 16 and maybe a 16th. And then I'll watch and see what that does. Normally, in between moves, I would wait three full revolutions of the belt. Let it get seated where it is before you make additional moves. The last thing you want to happen is to make a move before the move that you just made took its full effect. Then, then you start compounding moves and, and you'll get things confused pretty quickly.
Okay, I've waited three full revolutions of the belt. You can see that the belt still needs to be shifted over to the left side a little bit. So I'm going to make another move. more revolutions now but you can see it starting to and I've waited now. three full revolutions and you can see now that the belt is riding pretty nice and even on the on the in feed pulley so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there and I'm gonna let this machine run for 15 minutes or so and just make sure it stays seated there take a look at the drive pulley at this time. So you'll want to come up here and take a look at your drive pulley. Make sure the belt is tracking right on the edges of the drive pulley also. Uh, there are times when you get it to track on the in-feed pulley, but it'll be off slightly on the drive pulley. And that's, if, if it was off on the drive pulley, that's where we'd use this snub roller. We'd go ahead and move that one way or another to be able to get the belt to move one way or another on the the drive pulley. I can take this and move it all the way forward just to demonstrate on the edge. You'll actually see that belt start to move over. You can see right there that's moving my way right now. If I let it back then it'll, it'll go back over. So if the belt had been off I can move it on the drive pulley a little bit one way or the other with the snub roller and it won't impact the, the in-feed. It's too far away from this roller to impact the, the in-feed pulley. So you okay, so the machine has run for about 15 minutes. I'm happy with where it is. Everything looks like it's tracking real good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tighten up my, my take-up bolts, make sure my bearings are tight, make sure my snub roller jacking screws are tight and set. And, uh, and get it ready to ship.